So what about this idea of social transformation, broader societal change? So that's really what I want to talk about today. And I want to look at this idea of sociologically understanding how social change comes about. What is social change and how does that actually occur? My name is Ken Kane. I'm a assistant professor in the Department of Sociology. And I specifically uh, work in the area of environmental sociology. And I've been working in the department as an assistant professor for just over three years now. As an environmental sociologist, I have a rural sociology background. Sometimes my specialty area is not so much urban social problems, but maybe more rural social problems. And so I was asked to teach this course. And um, I realized quickly, as I was thinking about how to, how to best to teach this, that social problems, the core social problems, could be a little bit dark for especially students who are not from sociology and don't have background in those kinds of uh, social problems like poverty or domestic violence or uh, sexual assault or abuse that you know sociology students are exposed to more often. And so I had to think to myself, I thought to myself, how can I best teach this? And the best way I could think of was to do it in such a way that it engages students um, and it in involves them in the, teach in the course material um, while we explore those darker, more you know, troublesome, I guess, uh, issues. The story is I'm, I'm walking around campus and I'm thinking to myself, how am I going to teach this course? How am I going to best teach it without A, depressing students and B, you know, making it difficult for me to teach students who are you know, not very happy about what they're having to learn. And the one thing I notice when I'm walking around campus is, and I notice these sort of things, is everyone has got headphones on. Everyone's got earbuds in. Everyone's got the big phones on. And I'm thinking to myself, I wonder what everyone listens to all the time. And, and that's the point at which I realized there's a common sort of feature that I can start to think about, and that is music. So the course originates in my thinking about how are social problems presented, understood, explored through music. Um, I'm not so much interested in the way that the music itself is used. I'm more interested in the lyrics or the words that are being used. Because I think this is a way that artists, musicians, um, and more recently poets, and I, I can talk about that a little bit, are using their lyrics and their words to get people to understand these social problems that I'm trying to teach. Traditionally or historically, people that use music um, to teach courses tend to fall back on, especially courses that have a social justice, social problems um, basis, tend to fall back on things like uh, folk music. So the, you know, the, um, the Woody Guthrie, the Bob Dylans, and the people that really, the Joni Mitchells of the world. That, so there's sort of a, a focus on understanding social problems through this certain genre of music. And, and I thought actually there are a lot of other musicians that we don't often think about that are exploring this topic. And moreover, I thought to myself, again, what about the music that students, typically first and second year students, are listening to as they walk around campus? So then I started to think about, well, that opens the door wide open to all these different genres of music. I, I really explore a lot through, I guess, would be hip hop music. So hip hop is, um, has a long history in uh, sort of socially conscious spoken word poetry transitioning to um, the you know, rap, hip hop music. And so that's a natural place for me to start. But then um, one of the things in the course I really try to do is to expose students to different genres of music. So I can, I, I've been using the kind of music that some students would never associate with social problems, like grindcore, some really sort of heavy metal kind of music. Or I might use music that's more punk related um, so to address uh, um, suicide or uh, bullying, as I'm using more recently in my class. So I, I don't think there's any one genre of music that would apply. But one of the things that I can say with this course is that because um, I don't listen to all of these genres of music all the time, it's really an exploration for me to, uh, to look at the different kinds of music and what students have to offer. So in this course, students actually play a really big part is they're the ones that bring the music, bring the words, and bring the poetry to the class. Ethnographically, I'm exploring music all the time. I'm exploring, more recently, uh, spoken word poetry. And this is a way for me to bring things to the classroom um, that, that students often don't know about. When I started out this course, I thought, 
wow, YouTube, you know, this is a way that I can start to present videos. And I started to do that. And then I started to think to myself, well, is it one thing just to let the performance speak for itself? Or maybe there's a way that I can get students to start to engage with it. So that's when the assignment started to take place in that first year. I think where I've come now is thinking about what about the people that are behind those poems or songs? They have a lot to say about, well, they wrote that. So they, it came from some place. And the more I thought about it is, I don't think I can get at that in a YouTube clip. I don't think I can get at that even in, in a YouTube interview for that matter. So what I can do is bring the people into the class. How would I do this? And the more I thought about it, I thought we have a very um, strong community of musicians and poets in Edmonton already. So I started to um, explore this idea with people who are poets, with people who are musicians. And the more I looked around, the more I realized they're right here at the University of Alberta. So this was a way to, to bring students even closer into to social problems and showing the, the human face. And also, the reason that I do this is I want the performers to talk about how music or poetry informs um, the way they see the world and their understanding of the world. And at the same time, give students a chance to ask questions and start to draw the, those connections or make those connections to what they're studying in class to what's happening in this in the art community, in the in the music and poetry community, and then hopefully to take that and understand social problems more fully. response of the artists, musicians, poets, as I asked them to come into class, has been without a doubt positive. In fact, a lot of, the, of those performers have said that in, they've, they've never had a chance to come in and talk with students. Some of them are not university uh, graduates. Some of them are not university students. One of, one of the performers was telling uh, his mother that he was coming into class to perform to an undergraduate class, and his mother was really excited for him because he never finished his university degree, but she felt that, that this was an indication that he had actually su succeeded and that he was giving some of this knowledge, wisdom, back to students. And he actually was a very knowledgeable young person. I think the performers understood that I'm trying to make the connection between the sociological understanding of societal issues, the art that they're performing, and the way that I can get students engaged. A, a big part of why I'm asking performers to come into class is I ask them a question about what sort of advice would you give to a student who's interested in exploring this social problem from the, from the perspective of the arts and from the perspective of social justice and the perspective of how to be involved in this, the community in Edmonton. And so I know all of these performers have these other roles that they're playing, many of which are you know, related to education, related to uh, youth empowerment, related to um, social services. And students actually are looking for that kind of guidance. And I can tell them these sorts of things, but when they hear it firsthand from someone who is, um, in my eyes, very successful in, in blending and merging the arts with social justice issues, that's successful and I think it also does provide a lot of advice and guidance for students that want to be involved but just aren't sure how to do it. The reason that I'm able to do this course is because I'm really passionate about it. I don't think it's the kind of thing that you could just easily transfer to someone who maybe doesn't think or like, think about music or appreciate music um, in the same way. If, if, if you are not a lover of music, 
um, then I think it's going to be a really hard course to teach. So that, the most important thing is, is if you have a passion for teaching that course in that way, then I think it's a, it's a wonderful way to do it.